I've been making photographs since I was 18 years old, so that's a long time. I've never stopped and my curiosity and interest in the medium is the same as it was when I first began. I'm still incredibly excited to get my film back and see how the camera has interpreted the world. I've never gotten bored of this experience. I've also begun to work with groups of people, sort of like a dance troupe, and we are staging events or photographs at night with fire or water. This has been a really fun new direction for me. Living in Maine after having lived in Brooklyn has allowed me to work in my yard on two acres of land like an extended studio. I'm not sure where the work will take me, but I'm incredibly excited to find out. I've always made portraits and I'm particularly interested in nudity. Nudity or nakedness is a metaphor I find really meaningful and complicated. When people take off their clothes, something really interesting happens. We become more honest somehow, more awkward, more sincere. It's not comfortable necessarily, but it does lead to a kind of frankness. I like that. I used to be a dancer, and I think my interest in the body stems from this. I always start with the body in space. Although no one ever talks about the connection, I think my real love is body and dance. Sculpture, performance, photography, theater, and film are secondary to my love of the body. The body is our vessel, our home. It's how we make meaning in the world. It's how we understand the world. Without the body, there is no knowledge. It is the portal of the senses. I mostly make images of women, and they can be women I know, or women I find online, or through magazine ads. I find women endlessly interesting, and if I'm honest, they are more interesting to me than men. Certainly, they are visually of more interest. Women's bodies are more complicated visually and tell more stories. I'm also a woman, obviously, so studying women is more compelling and relevant to me. When I was younger, I always studied the stage above me. When I was in my 20s, I studied pregnancy because I wasn't pregnant. Now that I'm 50, I'm studying aging and death. I'm interested in how we age, how we age gracefully with integrity and self-love. I abhor vanity culture. My work is always an attempt at correcting our cultural assumptions about beauty. I find aging and many body types incredibly beautiful. I also know that all bodies experience love, desire, and sensual pleasure. My work is about celebrating this. I'm really interested in expanding our perspective of the beautiful and the sensual to include all ages and body types. My mother was a great sensualist. She loved to be naked. She loved to drink wine. She loved to eat and be in love. She loved her body and all it gave her. She had very little guilt or judgment about the pleasure of the body. This was a great gift to a child. When she was young, she was traditionally beautiful, and when she was old, she was beautiful, but in a real woman's body. She rarely exercised and had a very full figure. After my father's death, she fell madly in love at 65, and she became a central being again. She taught me a lot. Again, our body is a portal. It deserves great respect, and it deserves a culture that celebrates all its forms and ages. Nobody is deserving of invisibility. That's the world I want to live in, and it's the world I photograph. Recently, I began making photographs of plants, flowers, and vegetable matter that function like traditional memento mori. They were called classical painting, but are also about decay, mortality, and sensuality. Like my portraits, they are filled with beauty and imperfection simultaneously. In many ways, the bodies of the flowers have taken on the same role as the body of my human subjects. They are expressing similar things. I had a solo exhibition of this work titled The Appearance of Things in the summer of 2018. I was able to install the portraits, still lives, and landscapes together, creating an immersive installation environment. The walls were painted a deep black and the photographs were spotlit and hung from the floor to the ceiling. Each wall became a tableau of diverse sensual moments, as if seen from the night sky. 
Watery still lives became constellations and portraits became mythic figures. The shift in scale and rhythm of the photographs brought the narrative from the mundane to the otherworldly.